Ever since we could tell stories, plot twists have been used to subvert audience expectations. Like revealing Jules secretly does like Alter Bridge, or Josh hasn't played Final Fantasy whenever he talks about it. The resulting <gasps> what revelation forces you to rethink every single event that led to that point. I honestly question my friendship with people who don't know their huge material from their Masamune, but whatever. Hopefully when done well, something like a bloody good plot twist can be incredibly powerful, elevating any story to new emotional and intellectual heights. Just look at Jules' new music playlists and all those post-grunge recommendations. I'm pretty sure he'll be thanking me for years to come. However, plot twists are a tricky technique to get right, and half of the time they just don't work. Video games are very prone to this problem, often throwing in twists at the last minute just to shock you and end on a high, but they kinda just break the whole narrative once you start thinking about it. Whether this common problem exists because the writing in video games is rarely top of the priority pile, or just something relating to production woes overall, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 8 last minute plot twists that ruined amazing video games. Oh, and it goes without saying spoiler alert. Check the description for timestamps. Number 8. Immortal Undead Zombies? Uncharted Drake's Fortune up until a very specific point, Uncharted Drake's Fortune is a fun, exciting, and somewhat standard action-adventure platformer. Nathan Drake sets out on a fairly typical treasure hunt, which in this case is for El Dorado. But towards the end, things turn truly bizarre when Drake discovers that El Dorado is not a city of gold, but a sarcophagus containing a mysterious plague that turns people into bloodthirsty zombies. Because video games! The biggest problem with this plot twist is that it's so sudden and outlandish, it completely changes the tone of the game, which up until that point was pretty carefree and adventurous. Uncharted suddenly becomes a horror game which is completely jarring. You can totally tell what Naughty Dog were going for, the whole final supernatural revelation is some real Indiana Jones type business, but those films, particularly the first, are much more considered with their inclusion of magic and the unknown. Whereas Uncharted was more bold, brash, and pretty in your face. Uncharted 2 somewhat genuinely went down this route with the Shambhal and Guardians, but the whole thing was a bit of a misstep for the original, and it's why hardly anyone points out this first game as one of their favorites. Number 7. It was all a dream. Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, personally, I wasn't taking the lore of Super Mario Bros. all that seriously growing up, but ask around and who oh boy, some people really hate this thing. Somehow even more than any of my Mario Maker levels. Because to be fair, the whole it was all a dream trope is universally derided for good reason. People do not like finding out that a story has no emotional or physical consequence for the protagonist. And the revelation that it was all a dream just accomplishes this in the laziest way possible. I mean, sure, it's not like Mario's games had the most engaging plots, they used barebone storylines as an anchor for gameplay, but the idea that the entire world along with all of its colourful landscapes and creatures are just figments of Mario's imagination isn't exactly very satisfying. In hindsight, this ending is understandable given the development history of the game. Super Mario Bros. 2 is actually converted from an entirely separate and original title called Yume Kojo, Doki Doki Panic, with Yume Kojo meaning Dream Factory. All of this explains the significant differences in both the game's design and art style from the original, plus that ending. As a silver lining and kinda weird fan theory I just came up with, let's just say that Mario 2's brutally hard difficulty was in Mario's mind, because that also means the dude is haunted by potential level layouts and enemy placement he'll eventually be consumed by. How lovely. Number 6. Two Brothers, Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge For the most part, Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge was everything fans of the first game wanted, with the exception of the ending, which proved to be more than a little controversial. As hero and enemy meet one last time, Guybrush removes LeChuck's mask, revealing him to be the face of his brother Chucky. Suddenly, the two kids are exiting out of an amusement park tunnel and are scolded by their parents for running off. Wait a minute, did Jordan Peele's us rip off Monkey Island 2? Just give me a second, I need to go check out the name of his production studio- No. So the major issue many have with this twist ending is that it implies the entirety of the game was the imaginative mischief of two brothers, which is kind of a bummer for those who love the world and its characters. Yes, it is ambiguous as to whether this is indeed the case or if something else is going on, but the game ends with no answers. I'm gonna go with Chucky being Guybrush's tether, or the other way around, or both, it is totally up to you. Basically, it's hard to make out what exactly this ending was supposed to mean, and that's just frustrating. Sure, a case can be made for its creative aspirations, but it isn't exactly satisfying either. Ultimately, the ending was largely skated over in the third game, this time produced without the involvement of previous series designer Ron Gilbert. Number 5. All You Need Is Hope 
God of War 3. Containing amazing set pieces punctuated by brutal acts of violence in service to an irresistible tale of revenge, God of War 3 rounds out its main trilogy with one hell of a budget and some killer set pieces. At least, in theory. This was to be the grand finale of Kratos' journey, but it does start to peter out when the game drops a twist that changes everything you thought you knew. After finding Pandora's box to be empty, Kratos realizes that he had the power of hope within him all along, and that he needed to rid himself of his guilt in order to kill Zeus. The reason this twist was so poorly received, though, is that it feels overly sentimental, which is totally off for the God of War series. It is a bit corny, and that is the last thing you expect in a game chock full of torn apart monsters and muscly chaps screaming about about abandoned fathers. Fans just wanted to see Kratos get his revenge on Zeus and the Olympian gods. As is too often the case with many games though, it decided to be experimental and idealistic. But that just didn't work because the game had never earned it. The God of War titles were never about deep philosophical or intellectual ideas, making its attempt to steer into this stuff across those final moments mostly ineffective. A few years later, the absolutely phenomenally mature Kratos-fronted reboot solved everything, but this was one mightily awkward misstep. Number 4. It's all a video game. Star Ocean Till the End of Time Star Ocean Till the End of Time is the third installment in the Star Ocean franchise and is perhaps best known for containing one of the most infamous late-game revelations of all time. Towards the end of the game, the characters find out that their entire universe is actually a video game. Cue the epic eye rolls and someone who only had the name Sword Art Online to scream Eureka. It's quite easy to imagine the writers of Star Ocean 3 coming up with this twist and thinking it to be so clever. It's a commentary on the nature of video games. It's so meta, it must be genius, right? Actually, no, not really. In fact, it kind of ruins not only Star Ocean 3, but the entire franchise. Everything that fans of the games cared about was undermined by this particular revelation. It's like finding out Jamie Lannister never cared about all those innocent people that he saved, but doing so was what made him such a fascinating character. It's just bad. In another standalone game, this twist could be unique and intriguing, but not in a long-running franchise. Unsurprisingly, a significant portion of the fanbase didn't take kindly to this surprise reveal, and it has since gained a reputation for being a potent example of how not to do a plot twist. Number 3. The Sacrifice – Fallout 3 Bethesda might currently be on a bit of a downward curve, but they've been tripping over their own shoelaces for like a decade. Fallout 3, then, is an astonishing game not necessarily because of its plot, but more so because of its scope and exquisitely detailed open world. That said, the story is interesting enough to get you invested, having you search far and wide for your Liam Neeson-voiced father, who suddenly left without warning. This long journey eventually leads you to Project Purity, the goal of which is to purify the water supply and save a good chunk of the Earth. However, there is a twist. The control room is flooded with radiation, so in order to activate it, someone has to die. The twist is so terrible and badly conceived, though, because not only is it a pretty anticlimactic ending, but the choice you're given is false contextually. You either have to go in yourself, which will kill you, or send in companion Sarah Leons, which makes you a terrible person. However, as has become legend amongst the fandom, if you have a radiation-immune companion, the obvious choice would have been to send them in instead. The game doesn't let you make that choice, forcing you to choose from two predetermined outcomes that nobody wanted to go through with. This ending was universally disappointing. Despised. So much so that Bethesda took the opportunity with the Broken Steel DLC to let you send in someone else. It wasn't a free update though, oh no, you had to pay to make the game make sense. Because of course you did. Number 2. That's it? Assassin's Creed 3 Hyped up as the monumental conclusion Assassin's Creed had supposedly been building up to, AC3 instead spun its wheels until the very end, presenting fans with a surprise twist that works to set up future games rather than end the story it was advertised to conclude. The truth was that Juno, who had been guiding Desmond all along, wanted to actually control humankind, and urged him to release her in order to save humanity from an impending solar flare. He does just that, but at the expense of his life, and the game ends with the apocalypse being averted and Juno on the loose. The twist commits multiple narrative sins. It comes within the last 10 minutes of the game, so it feels pretty rushed. It forces a choice on the hero, the outcome of which goes against the very principles that have been guiding him, making it thematically inconsistent, and worst of all, it doesn't conclude the story. Yes, the setting of the Revolutionary War and the rise of Connor makes for something that's actually pretty great if you pick up the reworked 2019 version, but this final twist overshadows everything on a narrative level. What started as the story of Desmond only led to check back next time for more which then again is pretty fitting for what Assassin's Creed has become. 
Number one, the internet wants to kill you, Fahrenheit slash indigo prophecy. Oh god, this thing. I don't know if it was just because I was too young to really care or I was distracted by the new Foo Fighters album or something, but Fahrenheit slash Indigo Prophecy is rarely remembered as the game where you fight the internet, and it really, really should be. Where to even start? So before he made the actually good game Heavy Rain, David Cage made Fahrenheit slash Indigo Prophecy. Another detective story told through the viewpoint of multiple characters, while Heavy Rain is more restrained, Fahrenheit is flocking ridiculous. The story gets more disorientating and bombastic as it goes along. Plot twists are dropped in increasingly convoluted fashion, and while the whole thing is a treasure trove of point and laugh fun, the worst part has to be the introduction of the Purple Clan, a race of AI born from the internet whose goal is to take over the world. Yes, this twist was as stupid as it sounds, and yet it was played so seriously. Although I guess anyone other than me would have questioned whether it was worth continuing, apparently I just had to see that thing through. This twist is the tipping point that undercuts what is actually a pretty intriguing setup. I mean, that opening level is still genuinely fantastic. And while it can certainly be enjoyed in a so bad it's good with alcohol sort of way, there's no denying how terrible it actually is. And that is my rundown of the worst last-minute twists that just left you contorting your nose through the credits. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Let me know your own favorite terrible twists down in the comments below. Please also check out the WhatCulture Gaming podcast, and I'll catch you soon.